I'm going to say a great deal about what gamification is, but first I want to say a little about what gamification is not. There's a tremendous amount of confusion about just what gamification means, how it relates to different other game-related concepts, and so it's important to clear that up and put gamification in context before we move forward. First point, gamification is not turning everything into a game. I hear this a lot. Oh, so you're saying we're all going to be playing World of Warcraft at work, or we'll all be in some virtual environment like Second Life on the job. No, in fact, gamification in many ways is the opposite. Gamification says you're still in the real world. You're still at your normal job. You're still on a website because you want to buy a product. Gamification says let's make that experience better. Learn from games, find elements from games that can enhance the experience that you're having find the meaningful core of those experiences and make them more rewarding, create greater motivation, but not pull you out of the real world. Similarly, there are many situations involving games and work that aren't gamification. So, you know what the most successful video game of all time is? It's Windows Solitaire, as you see there on the screen. Nine billion hours that people played this game in 2003. That was the lightest data that we have, and that was a long time ago. Where do you think they play it? Much of the time, people play it at work. It's something people do when work is boring. Gamification is about finding things that are not boring in work and using game elements to enhance them. So it's very different than just saying there's games at work, that's gamification, or we're going to make work more game-like. It's also different from using games in a business context. So I mentioned earlier the Cracker Jack toy surprise as a game-like approach to selling a product. Well and good, not gamification. Similarly, the McDonald's Monopoly game is a very successful promotion for them for many years, and it involves playing a scratch-off game when you're at the McDonald's stores Again, not about changing the experience of a McDonald's, not about learning things from games and taking pieces from games and putting them into the business process itself. It's about using a game to make people feel like they're more willing to come into the store because they're going to get some kind of reward. So it's a cousin to gamification, but it's about using actual games as opposed to breaking games down, thinking about what games can teach us in those contexts. Another example of using entire games, which I've already mentioned, is serious games. Serious games, as I said, can be extremely powerful for simulation, for systems thinking, for education. Uh, but again, they are games. They are purpose-built to create an immersive experience that puts a person into an environment. And that's different from thinking about what can be taken from games and put into the existing environment to change it, to make it feel more engaging, and to create better motivation. Now, gamification is also in some ways broader than many people think. The previous examples were contexts where gamification is more specific. Here, I'm going to talk about how gamification is bigger than people sometimes talk about. Gamification is sometimes thought of as purely about marketing purely about getting people to buy things or getting people to be more engaged with companies. Similarly, it's often thought about as just points, badges, and leaderboards, or PBLs, as uh, I like to talk about them, and I'll explain in a later uh, session. So here is Samsung Nation, which is an offering on the Samsung website. And you can see it's got various badges and awards that you can win. It's got points that people get. It's got a leaderboard. It's got rewards. All standard gamification elements. This is clearly an example of gamification. The point I want to make is not every example of gamification looks like that. We already saw when I gave you three examples in the last segment, the Microsoft Language Quality Game and the um, Speed Ticket Lottery in Sweden didn't really look like this. So gamification is much broader than these kinds of examples, although they do fit within gamification. The danger is thinking that there's something magical about points and leaderboards and rewards, and that thing is what gamification is. It's actually only a subset. 
Finally, gamification should be distinguished from game theory. Now, game theory has a deep relationship to games and therefore to gamification, but it's something different. Game theory is a set of algorithms and formulas and uh, quantitative techniques for analyzing strategic decision making. The Wikipedia entry that I uh, put up here says game theory is the study of strategic uh, decision making using mathematical models. So game theory uses stylized concepts of games, people competing or agents competing against each other, but they are typically real world games like Call of Duty or Angry Birds or checkers or football, which have that element of fun and enjoyment and engagement to them. So certainly there are things that can be learned from game theory that are relevant for gamification. For example, one of the most famous game theory examples is the prisoner's dilemma, a scenario where two prisoners would be better off both of them if they cooperated, but the way the rules are set up, the incentives are for them not to cooperate. Those kinds of models can be useful in thinking about gamified systems, but game theory is more about defining formal models and mathematical structures to analyze those kinds of behaviors, which is different from what we're going to be doing in this course. All right, so I told you all the things that gamification is not. What is it then? I gave you the definition use of game elements and game design techniques in non-game contexts. Here are three other things that gamification does. The first is gamification is about listening to games. In other words, gamification means the recognition that games are powerful, that games can teach us things, that games are designed in sophisticated ways, that if we understand what those mechanisms are, and we understand how to apply those same techniques, we can achieve powerful business results. Secondly, gamification is about learning, learning from game design, but also learning from fields like psychology and management and marketing and economics. It's a way in to understand things about motivation, about human behavior, whether that's in a workplace context, a marketing context, a crowdsourcing context or a behavior change context, learning deep things about what makes people act in a certain way and design patterns to activate those aspects of human behavior, that's what gamification can do. And finally, gamification fundamentally is about fun. Fun, that difficult to define concept, which I will talk about uh, in a later segment, Gamification recognizes that fun is powerful, that one of the things that makes games so important and so significant throughout all of human history is that they're more than just mathematical models. Yes, a mathematical model can be used to play the game effectively, but the game is somehow more than that in large part because the game creates this sense that we call fun. Let me give you one additional framework for understanding gamification in context. This comes from some articles by a group of authors led by Sebastian Detterding, an influential gamification analyst based in Germany. And here's the URL to one of these articles uh, right here for, if you want to find out more. They use a two by two matrix to explain gamification and to position it vis-a-vis -vis other related concepts. On one axis, is the difference between whole games or whole uh, artifacts and partial ones or parts. On the other axis, they distinguish play from games. And this is a distinction that I'll explain in more detail in a later segment, but for now, think about games as things involving rules and structure and winning and losing, whereas play is pure exuberant fun, pure release of exuberant energy uh, in that kind of context. So what they do in this article is they distinguish along those axes four different quadrants. So the quadrant here involving play and whole artifacts, they say, well, that's toys. When you play with something and it's a thing, 
that's called a toy. And if you play but we're not making an entire thing, they say, well, that's called playful design. It's about designing using the notion of play, making things feel a little bit more playful, a little bit more fun, but not systematically structuring them with rules and goals and so forth. On the top left quadrant, if something is a game and it's a whole artifact, well, that's games. But specifically, uh, for our purposes, that's where we would put serious games. Because again, serious games are full-blown games to address non-game uses, and that distinguishes them from gamification, which, of course, goes here in the top right quadrant. Gamification being using parts of games to address non-business, uh, excuse me, non-game challenges. Uh, it fits in this quadrant right here. And uh, if you can't read my scribblings, here's the original chart from the article that they provide, which shows these four quadrants. And so this should give you a sense of how gamification fits in with some other concepts that are related, but valuable to distinguish.